woodcraft, helping you make wood work. Raised panel bit. This particular one has an extra piece on it, and it's, it's a back cutter, okay? This piece here. If you notice, when looking at this door, I guess for starters, does anybody know what the term raised panel actually means? It, it's, it's, actually, it's a literal term. Take yourself back in time to when everybody built doors like this with planes in their hand, not a router table. You'd get the same thickness wood from your mill. You'd probably be one inch you'd make your cabinet out of. And you would, you'd hand plane those boards, these outside boards down so they were the proper thickness. They were parallel, flat, square, all of that. You'd actually have a router plane that would cut these profiles that we've been talking about on the edge of your board. Just simply run it over with the plane until the, the depth stop bottoms out, there's your cut. When making your raised panel, you'd have another plane that had a kind of a curved cutter on it. You'd set your panel down, you'd sit it in with your bench dogs, and you would sit there and you'd work that edge until you made that cove shape or whatever shape you were doing on the edge of that board. You'd do the end grains first, you do the side grain, now you're done. But since you started with the same thickness of wood as your frame, and you brought it all down from one side to leave that quarter inch tongue, then when you set that tongue into that groove, most of that wood actually sat above the plane of that frame. And so that center panel was raised above that frame. That's where the term comes from. We have router bits that will do just that. It would look just like this without the back cutter. And again, if you take all of this cove from one edge, leaving your tongue, then this panel will be raised above the frame and it'll be inset in the back. This level will be down level with where the end of the tongue is here. And like I say, that's okay. The problem is if you want to sand this door when you're done, which you're going to do, we already established that you're going to run into little gremlins here. Just in this door right here, folks, I guarantee you that we did not change the setup when making these joints. This one is perfectly flat. This one stepped up a good 64th. My point is that when you go to sand this, if in fact this panel surface is raised above this surface, this crisp edge right here is vulnerable to you touching it with that route or with the sander. And if you do, you'll round it right over and you'll lose that crisp look and there's no way out uh, of that problem. That and you can actually, if you, if you do this with the back cutter system like I'm showing you here, then you can also sand this whole door through a drum sander because all these items are all at the same level here. If I wouldn't have told you that this panel wasn't raised above the frame, I doubt you'd have been able to pick that up. So when you look at a raised panel door, you'll notice probably most of the ones you see are actually going to be flat with the frame because it's so much easier to deal with as far as sanding and finishing. So the way you would do that is with this guy right here. So it's got the cutter that makes the raised panel part and then this back cutter, which essentially centers the tongue in the center of the board, a little bit proud of center, but it'll, it'll make it to where you can set that center panel down flush with that frame and now you can sand the whole thing without worrying about hitting that edge. Okay. Any questions? Um, o only, yeah, only in the issue of this guy right here. Because this guy, as far as I know, now I know a lot of folks will, will argue that they could jerry-rig it to work on it, you know. But it is only made to work on Jessam's fence. It's Jessam's product. So, of course, it fits on their fence. Um, is it an add-on? It is an add-on, yeah. And um, so, other than that, no. I mean, you know, you can do this operation on a Craig table as easy as you could on a Jessam table and anything else. It would just be this guy that really makes, changes the game, if you will. No, good question. It's done in multiple passes. I mean, you know, if you had a shaper or something doing it, you could probably bang it out in one pass. I, I, even then, I probably wouldn't. Why did, what? 
The shaper would be a little bit more expensive in buying the tool itself, but more importantly than that, the bits. That bit set right there is $125. That raised panel bit's maybe $150. Just the set, the rail and style set for a shaper, a good set's going to run you five or six hundred dollars. Oh, really? So as you start to build up an arsenal of bits, you're into it for a lot more than a router table. Yeah. Okay, I always wondered that. That and, and just looking at the price of a shaper and the bits isn't the whole story. You're going to need a power feeder. Mm -hmm. And that's going to add a considerable amount to it as well, another <coughs> nine to twelve, thirteen hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. So it's mostly cost, although I will say that the shaper will probably give you a better cut because of its lower angle of approach on the wood. Mm -hmm. So that's why. Um, go ahead. No, because what's in that groove is the same quarter inch thickness. It's just whether it's coming off the middle of the board or off the back of the board essentially, if that makes sense. I, I don't think that has anything to do with it and in a door situation like that. Yeah. And, and on an exterior door, you shouldn't have that panel being just that one thickness going through because it can let moisture through, it can let air through around that. When I've seen doors built, they'll do a raised panel on one side, then in between is a sheet of plywood, half inch piece of plywood, and another raised panel on the back side of that. So that that actual groove is more like three quarter in that two and an eighth door, whatever thickness door. So yeah, that's not a really good plan to have just that panel in a frame. And that, do you know what I'm saying, it going all the way through? So somebody... Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it would surprise me that they knew that was a single panel in that opening there. Somebody had prior knowledge to that. Because I think... Yeah. But if you were making interior doors, you'd just do it, you know, you just put a panel in it. But that is a true statement, yeah. Some people will do the raised panel ahead of time because you know what, that, that panel is solid wood. It's going to shrink and expand. And so what he's talking about is when you put this thing together, I probably have one in one of these pieces somewhere. You're going to want to make sure. No, I was, where's that frame? The tongue and groove frame. Oh, here it is. So, dig this little guy out of here. I use what we call um, panel line strips. They're little quarter inch by quarter inch by one inch uh, neoprene foam. And I'll put them down in the bottom of the groove. Maybe just one or two, maybe just one in the top. And what the reason that I do that is, is so that there's always pressure on that center panel. So as it expands and contracts, it doesn't, for one, break my frame apart. But more importantly, okay, so maybe not more importantly, a broken frame's a bad thing. But uh, equally as important is if it rattles. When you go to close that door, if that center panel's in that groove rattling because it shrunk, because during the winter we're cranking the heater up, we dry all that wood out so that center panel shrinks down. And then you'll get a little rattle when you close the door. So if you put that when with the panel line strips or or any other method for basically something that will move the, there's uh, uh, space balls they call them that that are quarter inch round rubber balls um, it, they work uh, they're a little too big for my taste and they're hard you know you've got a groove here that's only seven sixteenths deep to begin with if you lose say a quarter of that uh, then you're down to three sixteenths of actual you know uh, what's holding on to that center panel so you know you can you can severely weaken that not only that but the profile of the raised panel and it comes off of the mill or comes off your bit set it's got that curve or OG whatever it is and then it's got a section that's straight thinking that that's going to go into the groove if you've backed that out of that groove so far with that space ball that now you can actually see some of that flat before that curve starts in the door does that make sense yeah? Okay, good. So, right up in through here, if I had to use space balls, there'd be three sixteenths less of this tongue into that groove. That's too much to sacrifice, in my opinion. So, good idea, but uh, the rubber they use is just, it's just too hard. So, that's why I use the panel line strips, because I can squeeze them down. I give them an eighth of an inch to live in. And then there's always pressure against that, that door panel and keeps it from rattling and all that. 
but more importantly than all of those methods of how you keep this thing from bottoming out in the groove and keeping the rattle out of it is if you glue that in and that center panel wants to expand and contract it will break the door apart don't glue that center panel well and um, by first off you're going to need to know what is the penetration of your bit set and in this case it's 7 16 I know there are some that are only 3 8 from here to that step to the bottom of the groove some that are half inch that'd be the first thing you need to know take your overall dimensions you know obviously do some math one thing you can do is kind of build it and then just measure it you can put it together okay so it's flush on the ends here and then just measure from this step because that's equal to the bottom of that groove from that first step to that first step and then determine whatever you know method you're going to use for taking out that rattle and giving it that tightness um, so again if you're going to use a space ball you're going to probably have to sacrifice 3 16 on each end so say if it was 12 inches overall between those bottoms of those grooves you'd have to make that panel at, at, at you know considerably less what about 5 8 or so to get 3 16 on both ends so it depends on what your bit set depth of cut is what material you're going to use if any to stop the rattle and to be there for the expansion and contraction and then kind of work your math from there not really it, it, it uh, as far as you know is there a standard width here on just the outer frame of the door not really a standard but there are some things to consider if you started with say just two inch material and then you routed seven sixteenths off this edge and then maybe you put an OG or round over on this edge you're left with a very small amount of flat surface here and the eye sees the flat surface as the width of it so if you start with say just two inch here and then you did this profile and then you routed this you'd be left with inch and a quarter of, of flat wood and it doesn't look right it looks like you made it too thin I've seen them wider three three and a half inches and they just look stronger bolder more masculine um, but the reverse is not true making it narrower doesn't make it look more feminine it just makes it look too weak I with this particular bit set this is two and seven sixteenths so I have two inches of flat here plus the six to seven sixteenths of penetration it also makes Bob's earlier question about how do you calculate the width and length of that center panel um, quite easily if your penetration is seven sixteenths and you use two and seven sixteenths inch boards then all you have to do is look at the width of the door and minus four off it and there you know the depth of those two you know what is the dimension between those two so I try to stick to that an old trick you know so if it's a half inch depth penetration I'll use two and a half inch styles and, and rail pieces and that way it just makes all that calculation so much easier cool any other questions cool all right you have it thank you for coming out